Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at my top 5 JavaScript array functions, so let's get into it. The array every function allows you to check whether or not every element inside your array passes a given test. Okay, so for example, right here, I've got this array of numbers which represent marks or grades given to students in some sort of classroom. Okay, so we're going to be using the every function right now to test if this set of grades is a high performing class. So right here, we're going to say const is high performing class is equal to then we're going to say grades dot every. So now inside here, we're going to be passing through a function to test each individual grade. Now this function is going to return true or false. If at least one of these numbers inside this array returns false for this function, then this whole thing is also going to be false. If every element returns true, this is going to be true. So let's go inside here. We're going to be grabbing uh, each individual grade just like this. And then we're going to say right down here within this function, we're going to return grade is more than or equal to 80. So of course, if you get more than 80, then you are a high performer. So now, if I console.log, uh, the results of is high performing class, save this, go on the console, and I run this script, we can see here we get true because of course, every single number right here is more than 80, and they pass that test. If I make one of these numbers, for example, 75, save it and do it again, we can see now we get false in the console. Also, just a quick heads up, you can even use shorthand functions here. So for example, uh, we can do the exact same thing by simply just specifying right up here, uh, grade is more than or equal to 80 to give us that shorthand. And of course, this right here is going to produce the exact same result and we get false. So that is your array every function. The array find function allows you to search through an array and it's going to return you the first element which matches your criteria which you pass in. All right, so we can see here I've got a list of people and each person is an individual object. Okay, so we can see here I have two pastry chefs. So I'm going to use the find function to give me uh, the first pastry chef in this list. All right, so right down here. I'm going to make a new constant called results. It's going to be equal to uh, people.find. Then we're going to pass through here our test function. So we're going to grab onto each person just like this. And then we are going to just go inside here and we're going to return. We're going to return person.job is equal to then pass through pastry chef. Okay, so now. Uh, the first person which passes this test right here, or when this return, uh, you know, gives us true, then that is the person that is going to be returned by this find function. So now, if I console.log the result right here, we should see Lucy. If I save this, go in the console, and I run this script, we can see here, we indeed get Lucy for the result of that find function. But if I change her job to, for example, something like, uh, let's just do a regular chef, okay, and I save this, go down here, we can see now we actually get Maria as she is the next, you know, pastry chef in our list. So that right there is your find function. The array sum function works in a very similar fashion to what we saw with the every function from earlier on, but this one here is going to return true if at least one of your array elements passes the given test. Okay, so going back to the example with the list of grades for a classroom, we can use the sum function to test uh, whether or not uh, this class contains at least one high performer. So we're going to say right here, const uh, contains high performer is equal to then say grades dot sum then pass through here our test so we can use the same test like we did earlier we're going to grab onto our grade and we're going to say right here uh, grade is more than or equal to 80 so now if our console dot log the result of contains high performer we can see here in the console uh, we get 
of course false because none of these grades passes this test uh, this test function but if I make this 80 for example then of course run this again we can see now at least one of them passes therefore we get true right down there and that is your array sum function the array from function allows you to convert an array like object or list into an actual native JavaScript array. So this one here is probably the most powerful out of all of these functions because it allows you to call your useful array functions on lists that wouldn't originally have those functions available. Okay, so the best example I can think of is going to be in regards to selecting your HTML elements. So we can see here, I've got these three paragraphs and the HTML for this looks like this. We've got these three individual P tags right here. So I'm going to be selecting these paragraphs using JavaScript. I'm going to be saying right here, const paragraphs is equal to document.querySelectorAll, then passing through here P. So now we can see that uh, the paragraphs constant is actually a nodes list containing our three paragraph tags but of course the nodes list doesn't contain it doesn't contain all of the fancy you know array functions we're used to because of course it's a node list and not an array but it does have array like features so we can see here we've got indexes of 0 1 and 2 for our individual paragraph tags as well as a length property so if your list or object contains indexes and or the length property chances are you can use it with the array from function so now let's make a new constant here called paragraphs as array equal to array dot from then pass through here the paragraphs okay so now pressing enter the paragraphs as array is now the same list but this time we can see it's an array so we have access to all of these functions and methods which we wouldn't originally have access to if we were using uh, the node list from earlier. Okay, so this also works on strings or anything iterable. So for example, going back inside here, I can say something like array.from, pass through DOM right here, press enter, and now we get this right here. We get an array of each character inside DOM, uh, once again, having access to all of those methods, which of course aren't available on the regular string. So that is your array.from function. The array includes function allows you to check whether or not your array contains a given value. All right, so this one right here serves a very similar purpose to the index of function, which I'm sure many of you guys have used in the past. All right, so let's use the includes function to check whether or not this people array contains the word Lucy. All right, so down here, we can just say const results is equal to people dot includes then of course pass through here uh, Lucy so it's very straightforward if I then of course console.log the results we of course are going to get true so I'll save this go down here run this and of course we get true right down there uh, now you can actually also uh, pass through an index here and this index indicates where to start your search from uh, so of course Right here we got 0, 1, 2, and 3 for the array indexes. So if I pass through 1 here, it means the search is going to begin at index 1. So of course Lucy, Bob, and Maria are going to be included in that search. So if I save this and run the program, we once again get true. If I make this index of 2, it is now going to choose or it's going to be searching between Bob and Maria um, for your result or your Lucy text. So saving this now we can see we actually get false because of course uh, Lucy is not within Bob or Maria so that is your includes function right there. And that is all for my top five JavaScript array functions. If today's video helped you out, drop a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I've got plenty of videos on my channel around web development, which you might enjoy. So that is all for me, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.